Good evening and welcome to the April 2023 meeting of the Penfield Library Board of Trustees. Thank you for joining us. This is a public meeting and is being broadcasted on Penfield Public Broadcast and is available on YouTube after this meeting. Do I have a motion to adopt to the, uh, today's agenda? Naraj motions, I have a second. Jennifer, all in favor? Perfect. Uh, tonight, uh, uh, we have a new member joining us, Jason Becker. Hi there. Thank Welcome. you for coming along. Uh, we're looking forward to having you a part I'm of our team. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have a, a motion for the approval of uh, the minutes from the last meeting? Naraj motions. Megan seconds. All in favor? Uh, Naraj, we'll go, have you go through the financial report. Thanks, Brett. Um, so if we go to the monthly budget summary, these are this is numbers through March. So that's three months out of the year or 25%. So if we drop down to the total expenses, uh, we're coming in at 22% versus our um, standard this month at 25. So we're 2.5% better overall. Uh, where do we see our variances? Our wages is also 2% better, um, but we have opportunities in both our materials and contractuals. Materials is coming in at 13%. That's 12% better so far, but we expect that to um, catch up as the, uh, as the library starts ordering books and everything. Contractuals is coming in right now at 8%. That's 17% better. Um, all other expenses are less controllable, so we're looking good this month. Our operating budget, gift to memorial fund look good. Uh, the gift to memorial fund is little changed from last month. Um, our bank balances for uh, Family First and Canandaigua, as you see, is 78,000 for Family First, Canandaigua 63, total is $142,000. So can we have a motion to accept the financials as I presented it? And for motions to accept it. Second. 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 Harish. All in favor? Perfect. On to the next item uh, on our agenda, public participation. I don't see any. <laughs> uh, we'll go on to the uh, town liaison report, Linda Cole. Yeah, thank you. I don't really have much. As uh, I think you know, we're, we're, we, the town board, are now meeting twice a month instead of four times a month. So tomorrow night's work session, and we've already had our ledge session, which was two weeks ago, so twice a month now we're doing that. So that's, that's different. Um, I, I don't have a lot to report, but I want to stress something. You know, sometimes you ask me what's happening in town, some project or whatever. Um, it's really important that if you... If you have a question about something, it's on the website these days. There's an area on the website you can type in question, you know, uh, uh, projects under review. And it's really good because it helps me, too, when I get the questions, like, you know, what's going on over in the, on the street intersection or something. Under projects under review, it'll say what is happening for town board approval, what's happening for planning board approval, what has been approved, things of that nature. So if uh, you have a question and you're like, you know, what is going on there, and I want to know, it's probably on that list, and so um, I've been trying to stress that to everyone. Please go to the website. Use the website. It's a really good resource. Um, otherwise, is there any questions you might have? Can, can I ask what's going on someplace, even though I can go to the website? <laughs> <laughs> because I would have to go on the website. <laughs> you know what's going on at the corner of um, Atlantic, or Bron is Atlantic here, and um, Scribner? I do. I looked on the website. <laughs> well, I do too. Justin, why don't you say something? Uh, there is uh, a half hour house going in. Well, uh, but, Heritage uh, Christian form, Home. Christian Home going in. Yeah. I saw it and I, I looked it up on the town website and I was You're like, awesome. oh, that's what's going on. I love it. <laughs> Didn't even have to train you. You're right on it. Great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Otherwise. No. Thank I'm you here so for much, you. Linda. <laughs> <Didn't need anything. laughs> on to the next item on our agenda, friend to the Penfield Public Library liaison report. Judy? Yeah. Well, since I just got back, I really don't have anything to say, <laughs> but probably Harish can Harish? address the meeting um, that you went to in March. 
Certainly. Uh, so uh, they were uh, very overwhelmed by, I think, they, they got a lot of uh, positive uh, attention from and, and interest in volunteering from some of their recent activities. I believe, Rhonda, you were there as well. Mm -hmm. And um, there was, I think, so something of a question back to here uh, about whether they can continue with something of a, of a fundraising effort. Um, related to their membership or, or not. I, I have to review my notes on that again. Um, but I don't think there was a concrete question okay. related. Yeah, I've recall? spoken to them because um, the Friends are concerned that, um, you know, there's a Friends organization and there's the foundation of the Penfield Public Library, and they just want to really understand um, what the differences are and what the Friends should be fundraising for. So we've had several discussions. Um, I think it's clear, but we have a lot of new members of the Friends who would like to do additional fundraising, and um, it, it does have to be within certain um, perimeters, guidelines, Guide guidelines, Perimeter. because the mission of the Friends is to support the Penfield Public Library for extras, sort mm -hmm. of. I mean, they, they cannot support us for our operational expenses. So we have to be very careful about what they're fundraising for. And we do meet yearly. The new members would like to do more. Um, but Can I, they I, do more? Can they do more? Um, well, um, they probably fundraising. could do more. The mission does state that primarily they fundraise through their book sales. Yeah. Right. Um, so if they want to maybe sell T-shirts or kind of go outside those, yeah. those they can, um, but they just have to be very careful that they are fundraising for the friends, not for the library, and they fundraise for the friends in support of the library. So the language just has to be very clear. So we have talked several times about it. I know they did speak to you about it. I don't think they like my answers all that much. <laughs> they want to do more, and I appreciate what they want to do. They, they're really excited, and, and they love the library, which is fantastic. I do remember one thing, they were discussing their own mission statement and as to whether or not they should be codifying their means by fundraising into that statement um, and, and went back and forth. But because they, their dominating uh, mechanism is through the, the book sale, they right. decided to keep that in their statement itself. Right. Well, they have two co-new presidents coming in, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. So. Um, Thanks, please. Yeah, Judy. Judy here. Oh, sorry. Okay, here we go. They have two new co-presidents coming in that will share the responsibilities of operating the Friends. And so has the, the group has grown, as yes. you've been saying, with, with new members. Um, do we, have they grown by 20% or 10% or what do you think? Uh, well, the board has grown tremendously, probably 100 percent, the board. Okay. Um, the number of people who belong to the Friends, I don't have a number for that. Yeah, I but don't. They have been trying very hard to get new members. They had tables outside the library for several weeks in February, and they did, they did gain quite a few numbers. Oh, good to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We should mention also that they are having a mini book sale next month, May 5th from noon to 5, May 6th from 10 to 5, and May 7th, 10 to 2, only in the Ruth Brayman room, only children's and YA materials. But we would love to have um, everybody from the community come down and see what there is for sale and support the Friends. And this is in addition to their annual book sale? Yes, doing, yes, they're trying mini sales. And if this one works out, they will try a different kind of mini sale. Maybe they're thinking maybe um, history or biography, you know, just take a genre and, and just fit them into that one room and, and have multiple sales. That's, that's the hope. I had someone address an email to me asking me why, as a trustee, why we didn't have a box that out by the, I guess by the door, that people could deposit their books they want to donate. Why did they have to go into the library? Mm. I did not have an answer to that. So I referred them to, um, I can't remember, I think it was Mary, because it was before I left, so. Um, to answer the question, they can come during Friends Hours, which are posted on their website, and 
if they're going to do that, a large donation, we do ask that they go around to the back of the library during those hours, and then we have a friend there to help the donator bring the books in or, or get a trolley or whatever they need. Okay. If you just if people want to just donate one, two, even three bags of books, they can come to the circulation desk anytime the library is open, and we will happily accept that donation there. We just can't accept, you know, boxes and boxes at the right. circulation desk. And right. as for having it outside, um, it's just it's it's I a know. matter of keeping the building clean and right. making sure the books are are. Uh, well, there sellable. isn't that kind of overhang either that would protect. Them. Yeah, this. Yeah, it, just it would just become a mess. To work. But you know, whoever this person was, perhaps they're listening tonight. So. I think a lot of people don't realize for quite some time. Um, Quite some time, the administration of the library did not allow donations at the circulation desk. But since I've been here, we do allow one, two, three. I mean, honestly, if you came in with four or five boxes, we, we're not going to turn anybody away. We hope that if you have a lot of books to donate, you go to the back while the friend is there. She will help you. But um, we will never turn anybody away, to be honest. We, we love donations. Well, thank you, Harish, for picking up the slack for my not showing up to the meeting. So I definitely appreciate your... My pleasure. I did uh, unearth one question. I think it came from Maggie Hessian. Uh, is the Friends of the Public of uh, PPL, if they are charging for a membership uh, sl uh, slash collecting donation in, in, in terms of just actual funds, is that in conflict in any way with the Library Foundation? No. Okay. Do people separate understand? 501c, they're just totally separate. Yeah. Do people understand the difference between the foundation and the friends? We do have a place on our website that right. explains the difference in the two mission statements. Um, but I think that the foundation is only a few years old and many people are not even aware of it yet, so. Right. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for that update. Uh, we'll go on to the committee reports here. Uh, Naraj, uh, as the chair for the finance, I think you just did the report. Anything else to report? Nope. Okay. Anna in the personnel department. Yeah, so we're uh, getting ready to do Rhonda's review. Um, so you should have received uh, the questionnaire evaluation. Um, if you could try to get that to me, I, I would say like a week or so before our next meeting so I can compile information, that'd be great. Um, we'll go into executive session next month to discuss it and go from there, so. And Rhonda also sent all of us um, her self-evaluation, so. How did you want us to return it? Uh, if you could email it to me, that'd be great. If not... Uh, Can I put it in the um, mailbox? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Just let me know if you put it in the mailbox. <laughs> And just have a sealed envelope, I would think, too. Okay. Okay. Raj, you mean the mailbox at the library, library yeah. Mm -hmm. At the library. Sorry. <laughs> Is a, a, could you possibly like throw it up on Google Forms? Uh, I could probably try. I could, yeah, if maybe I'll try to send an email copy of it that's edited, you, you can edit. Well, uh, like Google, I use Google Forms okay. a ton for this kind of feedback. Okay. And it's actually really easy to set up, question to question, and you can just copy the questions and you can have the zero through four okay. uh, range and then, and you can set it to each, there's only so many responses, so it's just the board okay. members. I it's actually will. really straightforward. So if you yeah, if you want to work with me on that, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> cool. I can totally do that. That's All right. Problem. Awesome. <laughs> if you can send a copy of that to Deanna, she can put that into the Dropbox, oh, and we can great. just use it next year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, nothing new. Awesome. We'll go on to uh, strategic planning. Jennifer? I don't have anything. Nothing to report. Uh, Justin, we'll go on to the bylaws and policies. So bylaws were updated with all the changes that we made, we approved uh, last session. They are up to date on the Dropbox for anyone to read and review. But uh, as far as anything else goes, we are up to date. Awesome. Yeah, there was quite a bit you guys did last time. Thank you so much. Uh, communications there, Judy? Um, I have nothing to add, but if um, Megan and Harish have something they would like to say, go for it. <laughs> um, not anything specifically I can think of. Right. 
No, not this time. Thanks. Perfect. So we'll go on to the director's report, Rhonda. Thank you. Um, so we have begun the fine-free status for children's and young adult materials, and so far everything is going very smoothly. Um, what I'm hearing from people at the circulation desk is uh, that they sort of expected it because they're hearing about it from other libraries. They're happy about it. But um, the, it doesn't seem to be like this huge thing. People aren't like surprised. They're like, oh, okay, good. I'm glad basically that we've caught up. So it's fantastic. Um, it's it's just I think it's just a wonderful thing, and I so appreciate your support. We did I didn't put it in the report because we just had a meeting today with the Penfield School District librarians. About eight librarians from the um, elementary school, the middle school, and the high school came to the library today and met with me and um, our children's librarian Natalie and our young adult librarian Stephanie. So we told them what's going on, and we told them that we're going to be fine free, and we told them about the new restricted card for any student who lives in Penfield, and we told them about the fact that now any child of any to be five years old can get a library card, and they were thrilled with everything. So we're not going to really, um, we're not going to put this information about the fine free status on Facebook or, or really kind of promote it because we want our materials to come back on time. Mm -hmm. um, it will be nice surprises for those who find out, but um, it was good to tell the librarians because now they are, because they work with us and they and they advocate for us. So it's, it's, it was a really good meeting. Um, so I've had several meetings over the month. Um, one new library trustee orientation, so thank you, Jason. Um, been to classes. Um, Marie Benedict is coming May 18th, and I will tell you, um, that first day of registration, 140 seats were taken, and uh, by Amazing. day four, they were all gone. So if you were hoping to go to see Marie Benedict, um, I'm sorry, but we will You're be live streaming it, and, um, and anybody is welcome to come to the actual book signing afterwards. So we are just so, so, so excited about this event. Um, Oh, and we're, we, I did invite Pat Patty Utero, who is the director of MCLS, to come and speak and help introduce. And we do have a staff member from Senator Samra Brook's office, because oh. she's going to be in Albany, but she's sending a staff member to also help introduce. So it's really just exciting and fun. How many? I'm, oh, sorry. I'm not supposed to ask questions now. Yes. Oh, wait. Oh, um, <laughs> you, you want to ask now? I'm fine. I, it's just a general question. How many people, then, are we limited to? We're full at what, 300? Yes. Are we? Wow. Yes. Four That's days. That's amazing. Four days. That's awesome. And um, staff obviously won't be sitting down. We'll have about 20 staff members there standing up and helping. Um, if any of the trustees would like to come, you will be standing. <laughs> <laughs> but we could use everybody's help. It's going to be a lot of people. A lot of people. So. Really, really exciting. Just And she's going to be signing books? Yep. So she will have books for sale. I've had people ask me that. We have um, books. What's it called? Book. Oh, I should know this because they'll be mad. There's, new, there's a new bookstore in Pittsford. Book. Culture. Book culture. 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 They are coming to sell books. Okay. Nice. Yes. Um, so, yes, they will be there. Um, before the speech begins, before, before the lecture begins, you can come and have, buy a book, and then after they'll be set up by the fireplace, just like we did for Jason Mott, yeah. if you came to that, um, and there'll be a line of people, and she will sign books. Yes. Um, okay, we've started uh, compiling data for our next big project, which is our library operating hours. So um, this past month, we have studied um, the people counter, um, we basically took one full week of each month, going back one year, and um, compiled the data of how many people came in between the 10 and 11, our first hour of being open, and 8 and 9, our final hour of being open. Fridays we close at 6. Um, we did not include weekends because we're looking at the operating hours of our weekdays. Um, and we just, you know, put them into a spreadsheet, which I will bring to you next week. We did create a, a um, questionnaire um, asking people um, about various options. Would you like us to open earlier? Would you like us to stay open as we are? Would, and then, of course, something where they can just write down their 
their dream hours. Um, that started on Friday. We already have about 100 responses. And we're doing it in-house. We're not putting it on the website. We really want to capture those people who physically come into our building and need our building during our operating hours. So I think it's pretty great that we already have 100 within five days. We're going to keep doing it for a solid two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, our librarians are out there the first hour because we want to get those people who come the first hour and then they're going out physically the last hour to capture as many people as possible and then the questionnaires are just all over the building so if you come in you know feel free to take one and fill it out um, and let us know your opinion any questions about that all of it will come to you next next meeting um, we are working on the Library of Things, another big project that's coming up, and um, we have a list of items that we would like to lend that are non-traditional items. Um, I'm going to bring that to the next meeting as well as long as a, as well as a budget. Um, we don't have a budget in our 2023 budget for the Library of Things, so I'm kind of hoping that you will consider the Gift of Memorial Fund for this. The Gift of Memorial Fund is funding that has been compiled over years and years and years of small donations, and I think it's kind of perfect for this kind, for this type of project, because these are people who love the library and, and give $5, $50, um, and we've saved it up. So I think it kind of makes sense. Do you have categories that you are looking at to Yes, so we fund? have technology. We'd like to buy some hotspots. We'd like to buy um, maybe some Roku's with Netflix, that kind of thing. Um, we're looking at science or STEM, STEAM, whichever one you prefer. Um, so we're looking at some science projects. We definitely want puzzles. People ask for puzzles all the time. That's going to be number one to check out. Um, but. You know, craft kits. We have we have this really long list. Some people want telescopes. All the librarians are bringing in their ideas, and the and the concept is, you know, as you know, Library of Things is it's exploding across the country in public libraries. Um, it, the idea is that sometimes a family might not want to invest in this particular. $80 game, but they want to know if their kids would like to, would enjoy it. Right. So we would lend that game, um, mm -hmm. and they can play it for three weeks and return it, and maybe they'll buy it or maybe they'll just borrow it again. But um, it's it's it, I think it's a nice option for this community. I've really been watching the community. It's my first year here, and I I do think this would fit in very well. So we'll bring our ideas to you next month, and you can decide. We did have a meeting with Supervisor Drawer, Sheriff Thurston, and several town staff members to look through the library portion of the building and identify areas for safety concerns. I had ideas um, that I brought up, and they had ideas that I had not thought of, and together we're going to come up with a plan, and um, I'll bring that to you once that is, is ready for you. Julie Rapp, I want to mention, has been selected to take part in a, an emerging library leaders program, and it was very competitive, so I'm really proud of her. Um, That's we're going to for her, because she yes. hasn't really been with us that long, and so. She actually has been with us part-time for many years. Oh, really? Right, but she only became full-time a few years ago. Well, yeah. she does an outstanding job, Yeah, so. yeah. Um, we're going to be part of PenFest this year for the first time. We're excited. The Children's Furniture Reupholstery Project is completed. The furniture is here. If you have a minute, please come to the children's room and take a look at it. It's very cute. Um, we did have Narcan training. And last but not least, the Penfield Library Foundation has purchased one year of Canopy for us. Canopy is a streaming service. Um, for films and documentaries, highly rated film and documentaries. So um, it is now available. If you have a Penfield Library card, you can check out five movies. Um, so try it. Is that access um, to the website or a different app like You Hoopla? can access through our website. Okay. It's, it does work like Hoopla, though. Okay. Yes. Lots of children's materials as well. That is my report. Awesome. Any questions? Concerns, comments? Okay. No? Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Rhonda. Sure. We'll go on to uh, the next item on our agenda, unfinished business. I know we had the Holly donation here. Um, <clears throat> if we can move that to May, that would be much appreciated. Sorry. And then uh, unfinished base, uh, business, the Ruth Brayman room update. 
So I, I did present to the town board about three weeks ago. I want to thank Supervisor Debbie Drewer, Councilwoman Linda Cole, who is right here, um, Councilwoman Candace Lee, and Councilman Bob Okenden, who all approved our proposal. So they agreed to fund up to $26,000 towards the Ruth Brayman Room Renovation Project. So now we have the $20,000 that was given to us by Assemblyperson Lunsford a year ago. Um, we have the 20, up to 26000 from the town, so thank you, thank you. And um, in addition, I, I hope everybody remembers and the new members, um, um, the board did agree to, they didn't vote, so that's why I want to keep mentioning it, you all agreed to donate um, the tables and chairs, new tables and chairs. And that will cost about $20,000 from the Gift and Memorial Fund, which again is that fund that we were just talking about where people have donated over They're the years. They're going to be much more comfortable chairs than what we sit in now. Well, right we're now. hoping, you know, with arms and cushioned Terrible. seats, All but right. still stackable. That's what we got quotes on. Okay. Yes. When do you want us to vote on that? Um, when I find the, the right vendor. We okay. have a quote, but I think we need to do more research. So um, because now we're using town money, we're going to go out to bid, um, and I just need to... We don't need a vote, but yes, you want me to go and go out to bid and continue with this project, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, I didn't want to do it until I spoke get? to you. you what? Think? How many bids do we get? We technically should get three, but sometimes you don't. Right. Do we have to proactively go out and get the bids? Is that posted on the site for people? We, I'm going to work with the town, with Barbara Trudeau, and she's going to um, help me get the three bids. We have two estimates already, which I got on my own. I think we can include those because those are all on, town, on state contract. Those are both on state contract, so we'll need a third one. So I know we can afford this based on the fact that I already have two estimates, and they were updated. Perfect. Oh, I'm just going to ask that question. So um, we're hoping to um, get those bids and get started in September because I want to get through the summer reading, which is, you know, we need the room almost every day. And then we have the Friends Big Sale early September, which we need the room for that. After that, we're going to block out at least a month and um, hope, hope that it gets done. <laughs> <laughs> so Perfect. thank you. Yes, ma'am. We'll go on to new business. We have the 2023 commu uh, <coughs> community report. So last month you approved the 2020, oh, it's a 2022 community report. That's my, my mistake, sorry. Mm -hmm. It's a 2022 community report because last month you approved the 2022 state report. And those are the st these are the statistics that we pull from the state report to create the community report, which is how we tell our patrons how we're doing and how we're spending taxpayer money. So um, you can see that we did update our mission statement, which we revised last year. Um, we created a vision statement as well. So that's on the community report. And then we have all the statistics. So. Um, just looking at it, the community report, you don't realize how well we're doing. So I just want to give you some some good news statistics. Um, since the last or last census, we uh, the town of Penfield um, increased its population eight percent. So we are serving three thousand additional people. Our visits to the library since 2021 have gone up 34.58 percent. And I know a lot of that's pandemic related. So it's not like. We really increased 30. We didn't, um, but the pande pandemic happened. We weren't getting as many people in the building. We're slowly coming back to our normal numbers now. Um, the visits to our websites have gone up 7.86%. Um, a shout out to our social media clerk, who, because our um, statistics went up 93% for our social media interactions for Facebook and Twitter. 93%, that's just amazing, considering that so much of what we did, dur did during the pandemic was on social media. But that, this is how much more she's doing now. So it's just fantastic. We own 16.80% more books than we did the year before. Um, and what else is interesting? Programming is through the roof. Interesting, um, Overdrive is only up 4%. A lot of people talk about how popular Overdrive became during the pandemic, and people thought that our patrons would stick with Overdrive once they were used to it, but not quite true. Um, our database usage went up 4%. Adult programming, though, adult programming is, is through the roof. Adult program went up um, 100%. 
Um, teen attendees went up 996%. So if you see a young adult librarian, tell her thank you. <laughs> children's attendees. Children's attendees, 78.97%. That's amazing. Um, let's see. Early literacy went up 26.16%. Summer reading game teens, 695%. I mean, these are just huge numbers. And again, we're comparing them with a year that was partially, you know, pandemic affected. Um, so it's, it's not 100% real, but it, we're, we're definitely moving in the right direction. So very nice. good. So what would you like to see move more forward? Or well, circulation, obviously. Circulation is down across the nation in public libraries. Usage of public libraries across the country is way up, which is so interesting. So people are coming in and not checking out as many items. I can't answer why. Maybe just there's so much else for people to do. I, I, I don't really know. Um, our circulation went up very slightly. Um, where is it? Um, Le a little less than 1%. So it went up, but it, I would like to see it go higher. I'd like to see our um, library card holders go up. A lot of people, we lost a lot of people during the pandemic. We have to get them back. Well, I'm looking at like last year's community mm -hmm. report in number wise, and I don't know, numbers look pretty good to me. I mean, we had 238,000 and change um, items that were circulated in this year, we have 374,000. So I, I know you want it to, you, of course <laughs> you want it to move forward, but um, mm -hmm. for a year coming off of a, you know, a global kind of situation. Right. I don't know, I think that's right. pretty good. I mean, if you come into the library any time, pretty much, you, you know that people are coming back. You feel it in the atmosphere, and I think our staff is very well aware of how busy we have been. So that's, it's all good news, you know. I think um, perhaps I'm a little impatient, I don't know. And our adult programs went from 79 to 141. Mm-hmm, yep. I don't know, looks good to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is good. <clears throat> Rhonda, thank you so much. Sure, anyone, sure. Does anyone thank else have any you. additional questions or comments? All right, perfect. We'll go on to the claims and payments. Can I add one more thing Ooh. for the new business? Yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> now that we have a new trustee, Jason, uh, welcome. I think we need to think about placing him on maybe a one or two committees just to um, get experience. <laughs> so I don't know what the new procedure is, um, how to do that because we took the power away from Brett, I think, last oh, time. Yeah. So um, I think we need to maybe revisit, maybe come back next next month to figure out how we can move forward with that. Okay. Yeah. It seems like maybe consider adding something into it that, because it's not like it's it's uncommon for us to have a new trustee yes. not in the typical yes, that you know, cycle. So maybe just establish a procedure so that, you know, for Jason and then anyone going forward, that's, we have a procedure That's a good thing too, yeah. Yeah, because um, the other thing too, when I was making uh, these committees and uh, assigning, doing the assignments, um, I had to do it with the fact that we didn't have that seat, so I didn't want to leave uh, a committee just you know vacant. Sure, yeah. uh, Harish, that's why I gave you the extra assignment there. So maybe that's something we can work on. Where mm -hmm. uh, Harish, you can start to think about if there's one you know possibly that you, you don't want to commit to as much. That's that's why I wanted to give you that flexibility. Uh, and then we can figure out, you know, the other assignments there, too. But thank you for bringing it up. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, uh, Anne, I think you were the, the, the payments uh, claims. Yep. So I motion to approve vouchers in the amount of $13,303.77. Second. Motion, Jennifer. All in favor? Thank you. And then for uh, the May meeting, uh, Justin, you are uh, assigned for that. And then following that, uh, Jason, you'll be in charge for the June uh, claims. And uh, we'll walk you through that. Don't walk we'll you through that. Good to know. Perfect. <laughs> And with that, we come to the conclusion of the, the meeting. Uh, do I have I a do. motion to adjourn? 
<laughs> Raj. <laughs> all in second. Right up. <laughs> Raj, all in favor? Mm. I adjourn this meeting.